welcome to front bench live it's wednesday and of course stories are being born we are having a discussion and a half and a superwoman is with us just to unpack her story with us and that's why every wednesday we are all about inspiration we are all about state of the nation and politics generally but today we've decided not to take either of those directions we want to have an open conversation and just try to understand who is in studio tonight i'm talking about diane omondi a writer a author and of course something that she's going to tell us just briefly she's also in ministry we are having a good time with her so mm -hmm. sit back Start tweeting at Ongara Samson One at In Christ TV. The hashtag is always Front Bench Live, and Front Bench Live begins right now. So welcome. Thank you. Nice to see you. Good to see you, Samson. Welcome to Front Bench. Thank you. Thank you for creating time, mm -hmm. and uh, we don't want to take much time. Let's just go sure. deep for people who are watching. Okay. <laughs> just tell them who you are okay. and what you do. Thank right you. Now. So my name is Diana Mondi, as you've said. And I'm. Um, you already mentioned an author. I don't know if I would call myself an author. Primarily, I see myself as a mother and a church servant in, in the body of Christ. But more recently, I've also taken a lot of interest in writing, particularly for the Kenyan schools and the Kenya school system. Of course, we are aware, I think, that, that we have a new curriculum in this country. CBC, competency-based curriculum, and so everything new is being written. So all the publishers are busy, busy, busy writing the curriculum for this system. So that's what I've been doing for the last seven, six, seven years or so. Mm -hmm. So something you mentioned very interestingly, mm -hmm. yeah. um, you being a writer and also, you know, uh, being a church servant, that right. is interesting. <laughs> uh, last week I had a, had a discussion with the, uh, Bishop Ibrahim Mondi and it was just amazing. And mm -hmm. what you guys are doing mm -hmm. are like really, really amazing. But before we get mm -hmm. there, mm -hmm. let's talk about you as a writer. Okay. And something that I want us to discuss really fast mm -hmm. Is about 1980, uh, 85 yes. to 1988. Yes, you are one of the editors to the most influential uh, magazine in Kenya. Okay, the Beyond magazine. Thank you. Which actually put the government on check mm -hmm. and. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, later on also, you know, just trying to address the issues that, you know, the sure. general public were facing. Mm. T talk to us about that briefly. Yes, it was interesting. We had just come back from the United States uh, where my husband was studying for about a little over six years. We got married, spent a year as he finished up his master's degree, and then we came back. So the idea was to start a magazine that would in speak into the Christian community. I look back at that. We were in our er I sorry i was in my early 20s my husband is a bit older and just new in kenya and yet somehow we got into the the whole thing the the scene of christian media and communication and publishing and i look back and I say wow what was that i think we were too i should say i was too young or innocent to know that that was something really supernatural to be happening at that time um, yeah, but yes, Beyond Magazine spoke to the issues in the nation and we had a lot of success and I don't know, um, it, it was interesting for me because I love playing with words, I love editing, I like writing, but I love editing. And so I was one of the editors of that magazine. Most of the materials came in from other writers, Christian leaders, um, um, leaders in society, opinion leaders, and we were able to bring out something that really, by God's grace, had an impact. Mm -hmm. So it was quite an amazing thing. Yeah. It was quite an amazing thing mm -hmm. during that time for three years just doing this and mm -hmm. now it was shut by the government right. after three years. Mm -hmm. What was the feeling? Ah, uh, that was discouraging. Yeah. <laughs> that was discouraging. Now, what yeah. like it has been shut down, right. what did you like uh, decide you, you to know, do there? You know, at first you're like, what? What does that mean? What, what I came from a, a nation where things aren't banned or prohibited or, you know, we experience freedom of speech and freedom of the press. And so I didn't understand what does this really mean. I remember calling um, one of the people who 
had worked with us, who still had some of the equipment. We had desktop publishing equipment, which I was very fond of using. I loved using the computer, the Mac computer, and you know, doing designing and whatever. And I would say, can I come and use such and such? Can I come and do such and such? And she'd say, no, this is no longer ours, or this is no longer yours, no. And I, it was like, really? Everything has been shut, everything has been taken away, everything is stopped. It was like, it took a while to, to get that, really understand what that really meant. Mm -hmm. But we kept moving, <laughs> we went on to something else and yeah, yeah. yeah it's now, all good. After Beyond Magazine mm -hmm. and then now you you also got into, you got involved to church. Right. Just like you mentioned, you're a, a church servant. Right. How would you like try to you know put this into perspective uh, from the time you got fully involved to mm -hmm. church up mm -hmm. to now? I think that being fully involved in church is not a foreign thing. I grew up as a pastor's daughter, so church was always an integral part of our life, of our family, of everything that we were doing. So when even in, in coming to Kenya in '84, late '84. We knew very well we would be involved in the church at some point. It's just that the magazine kind of swept us away for a while, not in a bad way. Yeah. But when it was time to settle down and really focus on ministry, it was a natural, mm -hmm. it was a natural thing to do. Mm -hmm. So yeah. let's talk about, uh, before we get to now what you are doing currently, mm -hmm. let's talk about, just briefly, mm -hmm. uh, describe the journey now. You come from the US mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden you're in Kenya. And you're a Kenyan citizen. <laughs> I am a Kenyan citizen, sure. yes. Thank yeah. you. So take but us that, through that, that journey, happened briefly. recently. Okay. So I did not become a Kenyan citizen immediately, although I always desired to, to do that or to be one. The change of the constitution made it easier and it's a process and I'm glad to be a Kenyan citizen. But in coming to Kenya, I think for me personally, it was not a struggle, it wasn't a big adjustment, it wasn't a challenge as such. Maybe it just is in my genes or in, my <laughs> in God's plan for me to be in this place. And mm -hmm. so I've always felt comfortable, I felt at home. Of course there are things to get used to, but from the time that we met with my husband and we started talking about our life together, I knew I was headed for Kenya and would be in Kenya mm -hmm. for the, probably the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's move away, a uh, little bit away from uh, uh, this discussion mm -hmm. and let's go direct to what we wanted to discuss, the okay. impact you are creating to the society. Okay. And uh, you as a writer, we are seeing you as an instrumental uh, aspect of the society right mm. now, especially mm. what you are doing. You've just mentioned that you are doing the Kenyan curriculum yes. for the CBC. Yes. Take us through about that. Okay. Just, just before we go to the Kenyan curriculum, actually the introduction into writing with the publisher that we are serving with came in an invitation to do an integrity series, which is a series of books that specifically deal with issues like honesty, That's truthfulness, right. integrity related things. So that was really the, what, what pulled us in or pulled me in. And then CBC came along. So because of experience that I have in with early childhood, it was natural for me to do some of the curriculum writing for the early childhood. Then as I think as we're aware, the, the KICD has been building up the country, the government has been building up. We're moving from early childhood to grade well, up to three, up to four, five, six. So we've just been taking the journey along with KICD, along with the government as we roll out new curriculum for the, yeah. for the schools. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Talking about that, this mm -hmm. must be a, a tireful, uh, tiresome kind of a, a project and right. sometimes it requires long hours of working, dedication Definitely. <laughs> and everything. Right. Looking at you mm -hmm. and maybe the quote in quote, uh, maybe the perception and the origin mm -hmm. where maybe how you've been brought up. Mm -hmm. What is the drive and why do you have to do this for Kenyans? Mm. You know, children are our hope for the future, really. I believe that with all my heart. Yeah. Okay, we can make some changes, we can do some good things in our positions, but children are our hope for the future. And if we're not going to be able to train them in matters of integrity, values, the competencies that they need to succeed in the world, where are we headed? 
So, number one, I enjoy the work. I enjoy, as I said, I enjoy editing, and writing is okay as well. Um, yes, it's long hours, many nights of very little sleep, to be honest, because the deadlines are tight, the requirements are high, the competition is crazy, but but it's, it's just that desire to see something quality being put into our children that will make a difference for them, that will make a difference for the society, that will take us to where we really need to go. So that's what drives it. Thank you so much. Yeah. And we, uh, we want to get a little bit deeper to that. But before we do that, mm -hmm. let's take a short commercial break right here on Front Bench Live. We'll be back with many more. Like I told you, uh, Diane Omondi is still here with us, just you know, taking us through what she has been doing. This is crazy, man. And you need to listen to this end to end. So keep tweeting at Ongara Samson One at In Christ TV. The hashtag is always Front Bench Life. We'll be back shortly. Good. Are watching in Christ Television. You need to be heard. Welcome back to Front Bench Live. Of course, this is where a conversation can get better. And like I told you, I'm hosting a superwoman, Diane Omondi. She's here with us. And just straight away, let's continue with this conversation. Mm -hmm. We went to a commercial break when we were talking sure. about uh you mm -hmm. doing uh, the kenyan curriculum and sure. like this is just like why did you have to do this and <laughs> now you're telling me okay this is something that i like doing mm -hmm. not everyone would like i want to ask you a personal question mm. when you do all this mm -hmm. don't you feel exhausted i mean who of us finishes our day not feeling exhausted really whatever work we're in we give it everything we give it our all mm -hmm. so yes there's exhaustion but <laughs> if we want to gain something we're going to have to work hard yeah if we want to gain something we're going to have to give whatever god has entrusted with us and give it with all our heart i'm not saying we run ourselves you know ragged or burn out things like that but hard work is involved yes it's exhausting it's exhausting, as I said, there's, the work is intense and, and very competitive for that matter. And timelines are short. But I think that it's much more satisfying to have finished or have given whatever you have to give and be tired at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. I'm not look, we're not looking for an easy life, really. Talking <laughs> about hard work, mm -hmm. if you want to achieve something, you sure. must work hard for it. What is your expectation in all, in everything that you are doing? Expectation is, I guess, of myself to do my best. Of course, there is always a very, very, very necessary place of humility and depending on God. Many, many times I painfully realize, <laughs> even in a given day, many times, I can't do this. I can't do this on my own strength. I can't do this without the Lord. I can't do this without that inspiration and really ability that comes from God. So as much as we give our all or give our best, we always need to recognize that that's not my doing. Because the Word of God says that, that God works in us to will and to work according to His good purpose. So we know now that it's Him working through me or He is working through me to accomplish whatever it is. Mm -hmm. Whatever field, whatever area, whatever contribution someone is called to make, it would be God working through them. Mm. Talking about um, <coughs> something you mentioned this, yes. uh, that also uh, seems a little bit, you know, uh, that interesting the mm -hmm. most is that you can't do this all by yourself, sure. which is really true. Right. And uh, do you think, or from your perspective, do you mm -hmm. see, like, uh, what are the predicaments that you can highlight, especially in what you are doing currently? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, with the uh, with the CBC, right? What are the predicaments that you can actually highlight as at now? Mm, I think the challenge is getting materials for these children, these learners, these young people, who will tr that will truly build them, that will truly not only equip them academically, 
but that will equip them emotionally, even spiritually, to be really useful and, and integral members of society. So weaving that in with, okay, my subject has been English, so weaving in that, that in with how to speak with correct grammar, or how to listen well, how to speak clearly, how to write clearly, weaving that in with another subject like mathematics. I think that's where the challenge comes in because we want to, of course it's an academic exercise, it's an academic curriculum, but the emphasis now needs to be building the whole person, not just building the intellect. So that's one of the challenges. Of course, as I said, um, the pressure is high. The government is rolling out this program with, in some senses, a limited amount of time. So. By the time you get the, the guidelines that you need to follow, they're called the designs, the curriculum designs, and then need to have that product ready for production, it can be quite tense. Yeah. yeah. Highlight, highlighting these kind of uh, challenges, or the, what mm -hmm. we call the predicaments, mm -hmm. as you have mm -hmm. done, what are some of the possible recommendations you'd put forward to just curb this, if there is any? Mm -hmm. I think that, that um, if, t okay, the program is already rolling, so I would have said maybe taking more time, but it's a bit late for something like taking more time in terms of the CBC. However, I think um, just being very intentional about knowing that we want something quality in the end that's going to help our children, help the learners, help this nation. So if there are any pressures or competitions that are coming from outside that aren't really appropriate, I think we would all do well to sit back and say, okay, let's do this, but let's do it well. As I said, the timeline is, is in place and I don't think it can be changed. But I think everyone involved needs to give their very, very best and sincerely do what we can to make this system work for our, for our school system, for our children, for the learners. Let me pick a question for you. Mm -hmm. uh, you're saying, suppose the timeline has, uh, could have been stretched. Yeah. This, this thing could have, be, could have worked perfectly. What you're saying? What you're suggesting? Perhaps it could have been a better, yeah. Than what we are, right. we are probably right. going to see going sure, forward. Sure. I want to ask you, mm -hmm. having all this put together, like you as a stakeholder in this, mm -hmm. you're playing sure. a, a major role into uh, this curriculum. Sure. What, do you, uh, what don't you want to see? happening in the future going forward. Mm -hmm. I would not like to see, okay, to use an analogy that we may or may not be familiar with, but it's from the Bible. Jesus talked about pouring new wine into old wineskins um, and it bursts, right? Maybe I said it opposite way around. Is it old wine and new wine? <laughs> it's okay, just <laughs> okay. So I wouldn't like to see the things get turned upside down to the extent that whatever we're trying to accomplish is actually counterproductive. Perhaps because the old systems are still in place, they're very entrenched. Teachers have, have known how to use 844. They've been trained in 844. They've adopted the philosophies of 844 and now we're changing things. Perhaps a little more time to retrain teachers. Perhaps a little more time to have the parents and the society understand what is this all about so that it doesn't end up you know being counterproductive when you have you're trying to put in something new but the the containers aren't ready or the systems aren't ready mm -hmm. or the structures aren't ready to really affect it mm -hmm. in the way that we would like to see mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. just to, uh, from your thoughts mm -hmm. uh, you as a stakeholder again yes playing a major role still mm -hmm. in the curriculum that is uh, that we are trying to mm -hmm to see forward. Mm -hmm. uh, do you have any fear? Do you have your fears that, uh, yeah, it, it might work well, or mm -hmm. maybe sometimes it might not work well mm -hmm. for some reasons that you have highlighted, mm -hmm. one of them being short time turnaround? Mm -hmm. Yes, I have fears, definitely. Yeah. Um, I guess we all need to do whatever we can to make sure that it does work. But as I, as I mentioned, the, the competency-based curriculum is, is an excellent foundation. It's, it's, it has all the right, okay, in my view, right or appropriate theories behind it. And yet it's a very different type of approach to education 
all the way from learning styles, teaching styles, methodologies, assessment styles, assessment criteria, all of those are quite different. Um, so I wouldn't, yeah, it, there's a fear, there could be a fear that it won't really take hold mm -hmm. and in the process there could be some confusion among the, in the system or among the children, the well, learners. Well, now because yeah. you've mentioned all this as mm -hmm. at this time mm -hmm. and uh, you look at it from how you present it and how you understand it right. uh, from inside out. Right. And we have the structure the way it is, we mm. have the time turned around, and we have the stakeholders sure. just like you. Right. And just try to compare now what we are going to have going forward with what we had, the 844. <laughs> okay, we'll have a, we have a system that is much more flexible a system that hopefully in the CBC will honor different gifts, different abilities in different learners, a system that hopefully will not pigeonhole the academic ones, the doctors and the lawyers as the ones who are bound for success, and the artists and the, the artisans of other types who are somehow in a lower caliber. I think there's an honoring of different skills, abilities, interests, talents, and hopefully that will bring us to a much more healthy and holistic society where every member's participation is equally valued and respected, and I would believe um, honored or <laughs> rewarded as well. Yeah. Yeah. So you as a church servant, you started right. mentioning that when we started the program, mm -hmm. and I would not want to end this broadcast without asking you two or three questions okay. regarding your faith. I'm yes. not going to ask you about how strong your faith is, <laughs> but what I wanted to ask you, you've been mm -hmm. to Kenya for several years sure. and you're seeing the kind of uh, gospel or Christianity quote unquote we have mm -hmm. right now. Mm -hmm. What is, how, how, what do you see from the state of uh, Christianity today mm. and how would you evaluate it to what mm -hmm. used to be there? Mm. Okay, what used to be there I might not speak to as much. However, what I see today is, and maybe it has been there, but I see a Christianity that's kind of taken a backwards perspective. When I say backwards, what I see in, in the Word of God and in Jesus' teachings is that we are here to serve, we are here to do something to make a difference to help others that the Word of God says that God has prepared good works beforehand that we would walk in them He has a plan and purpose for our lives But I when I say backwards I think we've come at it in the wrong direction in the sense we're thinking God has a plan for me He has good things in store for me. I'm going to be rich. I'm going to be happy I'm going to be rather than God has a plan for me because he wants to use me to accomplish something for his purpose and for his glory. So it's like we have flipped it around. And I think that's seen in so many aspects of, of faith, of Christianity. It's seen in our worship. You know, I was just listening this afternoon to a song on the radio, a station that I love. But it was all about God loves me so much, God loves me so much, God loves me so much, that's enough for me. God loves me so much, of course. But if that's our focus, if that is, it's a starting place, fine. Salvation is a starting place, but it's not an end in itself. We are called to make a difference, to serve. That's why I said that I'm a servant in the body of Christ, and I'm using that word very intentionally. Mm. We were, it's not about me. And yet so much of what we hear, so much of what we listen to, so much of what we sing about, so much of what we read about is, is really an elevation of me and my goals and my dreams and my visions. And, and really, I think we are just all <laughs> simple people by God's grace. Yeah. God is using us. Yeah. So just because of time, sure. what would be your parting shot before we close? <laughs> I think I would just encourage us that whatever it is that God has called you to, for me it has turned out to be a bit of writing and a bit of teaching. Um, whatever it is God has called you to, know that He has a reason and a plan and there are things that He has prepared for you to do that no one else can do. So do them to your very best with God's strength and God will use us to make a difference. Thank you for making time. <laughs>
to talk to <laughs> Thank us. Thank you, Samson. We are glad and we are hoping to have more conversations sure. with you, especially on what you are doing and what you'll be doing in mm -hmm. future. Thanks for coming to Front Bench. Thank you. So we really we do appreciate you for watching. This has been Front Bench Live. Keep tweeting at Ongara Samson One at In Christ TV. The hashtag is always Front Bench Live. Front Bench Live comes back next week. Same time, same channel. Good night. Good luck. God bless.